Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary. This is a Sweet Stuff Saturday, recorded on a Sunday, so not too bad. And I just wanted to go through a couple of things that I got in for review recently that I thought you might be interested in. So these are all real quick. They're not really overviews. This is just me. Hold on, let me switch the light up. Oh, there we go. Now we get some better light. Uh, just some things that I wanted to take a look at. No projects in the shop right now. We were on vacation the past couple weeks. Uh, I do have one thing that I'm going to be working on. And this is a clue, and it is not a giant bong, which is what everybody thought it was on Instagram. But we'll get to that later. So let's take a look at the three knives that are on the table. And there's one other thing that needs to be on the table, is this flashlight. So this is a flashlight from Ace Beam. It's an 18650. Uh, it's the E70 Mini. And uh, this light is super mega bright. It has the dual sleeve, so it has this blue decorative aluminum sleeve underneath this black outer sleeve. Uh, it tail stands, it has a decent pocket clip, and uh, for an 18650, it's not too big. Uh, it is pretty heavy. Uh, there's one thing that drives me crazy. You cannot activate this light by turning it, tapping it once. You can hold it down and it'll come on, or you can double tap it and it'll come on. Uh, not my favorite UI, but uh, I'm still looking, I'm still working through the light, so we'll we'll have an idea uh, sooner rather than later. Compared to the TK17, I like the TK17 much better, but uh, Ace Beam is really making lots and lots of nice stuff, so I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this. So, that's something that's in for review, and these three knives are in for review. So, the first knife on the list, this is the uh, Vosted Knives Mini, or this is the Vosted Knives Nightshade. As you can see, it has a very pronounced sort of lum style blade. Uh, this is a uh, great G10, as you can tell. It's a liner lock. You can see that there's some milling in the liner lock. Deep carry over the top pocket clip. And there's this decorative pivot collar here on both sides. The blade steel is uh, 154 CM, right? 154. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is right there, 154 CM. Uh, overall, I've carried this knife uh, a little bit uh, on vacation, and um, it's weird. As you can imagine, with a knife where the blade is this far forward and this far down, and with this blade shape, it is really strange. But a couple things that I noticed. Number one, the flipping action is really quite good. Uh, number two, the uh, knife slices like a demon. Because it has this really broad blade and relatively thin stock to start with, it cuts really, really well. So... Uh, look for a review of the Vosted's kni Vosted Knives um, Nightshade coming soon. This is the knife you guys probably all knew I was going to buy, which is the uh, Ferrum Forge Gent 2. So the original Gent was a collaboration between Ferrum Forge, Wee Knives, and uh, Drop. Drop has since got out of the knife business, though there's some of their knives are still available on Amazon, which I would definitely take a look at because there are a bunch of good knives that they made. Um, but this knife is the uh, the Ferrum Forge in-house version. So they took the, the Mass Drop Gent and they brought it in-house and they did a couple of things, all of which makes this a budget knife, which I think is probably the wrong direction to go with the Gent given where the market is now. I mean, the, the Gent was a mid-price knife when it was released, and now it's like, you know, lower mid-price knife because knives just keep getting more expensive. But uh, Elliot and company decided, Elliot and Chris decided to do something a little different, and instead of making the knife fancier, they made it cheaper. My guess is that this allows them to put some space between the, the entry-level model and a fancier model that they would produce, you know, with some kind of fancy handle scales and better steel. So this is 9CR steel, which I actually think is pretty decent. It's, you know... A little worse than VG10, but this knife was $70. They got rid of the internal milling, and these are just stainless steel liners. And they've improved the pocket clip. Uh, they have changed the pivot, and they have added some texturing and jimping to the flipper tab, which it didn't need, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, the other thing that they did is they put a scoop right here so that you have a better place to put your finger. Uh, overall, I like all of the changes they made, except for, obviously, the steel. Um, this knife is in for review, and a review will be coming soon. Uh, the next knife that I want to talk about is the knife I'm probably most excited to review. Uh, there are a couple other knives that I'm looking to get, but this one right now is the one that was at the top of my list. This is a collaboration between uh, CM Knife Designs, who has produced a couple of 
um, self-published blades with Lefty EDC, and it is a collaboration between CM Knife Designs and Best Tech. It is known as the Best Tech Tonic, and which I think is really awesome, Tech Tonic, the Best Tech Tonic. So this is a knife that's designed to be a very fidget-friendly lockback, which is incredibly rare because of how a lockback mechanism works. So if you look at a lockback, a lockback kind of functions like this. So there's a groove in the channel, or there's a groove in the back of the blade, and then there's a, uh, a uh, an arm. And when the groove passes through the arm, it the the passes underneath the arm, the front portion of the arm snaps into place, kept in place by spring tension, into that groove in the back of the blade. And so when you lift up the lock back, you're still getting all of that friction between the rear tang of the blade and the uh, lock arm, the lock bar arm. So what CM Knife Design did is he put a really, really, really hard ball bearing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it. There's just no way. It is super duper tiny. Let's see if I can get it with the aid of a flashlight, maybe. Of course I'm carrying. No. Anyway, there's a really tiny ball bearing that sits at the end of the lock bar arm, like right at this point, and it rides on the rear tang of the knife. But because the ball is so tiny, it has very little surface area in contact with the back rear tang of the blade. And with very little surface area and two very hard surfaces, it opens pretty smoothly. So you can easily flick this knife open. And one thing that's kind of cool is there's like a preload, like right to there. But once you overcome that preload, the knife just pops right out and it is fast. Now I'm flipping from around, but let me see if I can, there you go. So no wrist flick required. You just put a little tension on the, the, the thumb stud and it opens right away. The knife has uh, come in a couple of different versions. There was black, natural, and green micarta. I'm sort of done with micarta for now. This is some carbon fiber. I'm also done with carbon fiber, but I prefer it over micarta. Um, and then there's the titanium up here. As you can see, it runs titanium liners. They've not been milled out, but this is a really thin knife. Excellent little uh, sculpted titanium pocket clip. And then the blade is M390. This is an expensive, expensive Vestec. I think this might be their most expensive knife ever. It was uh, $300. Um, but Best Tech has been used as an OEM for a bunch of high-end self-published blades for a long time, and no one has complained. This knife is exceptionally well-made, and it is something that you should be on the lookout for, because boy, is it good. Uh, so this is the Best Tech uh, tonic, uh, and uh, that was the Sweet Stuff Saturday for this week.